unboxing here. I just purchased the Ryobi biscuit joiner and a little bu little bucket here of number 20 um, Ryobi biscuits. There's a hundred in this. These are the larger size biscuits. Number 10 is smaller and zero is smaller than that. Those are the three most common. Um, I did a lot of research before I bought this. This is a six amp machine and it comes with a uh, dust bag on the back. It comes with 20 number 10 biscuits, the smaller ones, and it comes with a little tool bag, like a little uh, cloth green bag like most Ryobis come with. Um, and it is corded, it's not cordless. And uh, this is very similar to their blue model, what I believe. I couldn't find any differences online between the blue version of the Ryobi and the green, uh, but the green is their new style, so I'm not sure if it's any better or if it's the same machine. I did look into the larger size Porter cables um, and, and Makitas and DeWalt's. They range from about $150 to $180 to $200, and they don't have the pistol grip like this Ryobi has. Um, the Craftsman is also the very same machine as this. It's also $100, but it only comes with a one-year warranty. The reason why I bought this is because it comes with a three-year warranty. And um, it looks exactly the same as the Craftsman, probably same manufacturer, wherever these are made. Um, so without talking more about it, uh, I thought this was the best stocking. So we're going to get right into opening it up. I looked for a lot of reviews on this online, and there wasn't any, so that's why I figured I'd make one for you guys. All right, so that's fresh out of the box, Ryobi case, and I have a lot of Ryobi products, and people down, uh, you know, talk bad about them all the time, but I have never had a problem with Ryobi product besides some of their batteries uh, that come with their standard models. The smaller ones are not very good, uh, but here we have the dust bag. And this has a six foot cord on it. The Craftsman, which looks very similar, has a 10 foot cord. So that might be a buying factor. But again, I bought this because it has the three year warranty. Uh, packaging is good and it's in the folded up state right now. Um, you have different compounding angles you can adjust this at. It does have positive stops. I can feel it click in at 90. And the dark black, let me see if I can zoom that in here. The dark black triangle right there is your lock-in, and you can see when I move this, it locks in right there at 90, and you adjust it with this key. I believe it has a 45, yep, and a folding position, and it doesn't seem to have one at 135, so there's only positive stops at 90, 45, and 0. What I mean by positive stop is the uh, ratcheting mechanism in here um, actually has a stop built in, kind of like your miter saw will have a stop at different degrees, usually 45 uh, or 22 or whatever the standards are. So, What else is in here? Here's our 10 biscuits. And that is it. Where's my instruction book? Oh, there it is. Um, good cardboard packaging in here to hold that bag steady during shipping. And then your side compartment is the owner's manual. And I'm gonna take a minute to read this and tell you guys a little bit about a couple more features of this machine. All right guys, I read a little more about this um, Ryobi biscuit joiner. And I did wanna say also that uh, these are about $7.97 at Home Depot. These boxes, or whatever you call them. Uh, of number 10, they have zeros, they have 20, so they're about $7.97 or eight bucks or something like that. So here's a couple features of this machine. Uh, if you're looking down the length of the handle, left side is your angle adjustment, right? And this is rubber up here because you're supposed to put your thumb on it. And I'll show you that later when I demonstrate it to hold it steady as you push it, push, push the unit into it. I didn't have that locked off. But let's just say uh, we're gonna cut 90, because that's the most common. I set my triangle at 90. And, and that's in the positive stop in there, so I know it's there. I don't have to fine tune it. Now crank this down, don't kill it, just hand tighten. Now on the opposite side of the machine, you have your height adjustment. And that adjusts what they call the fence, which would be this portion. And you want to adjust that with the machine unplugged and with this loose, 
the angle adjustment. Your angle adjustment also locks the height. So I'm going to loosen that and I can twist this knob and adjust my height for the height of my work piece. So if I'm on a... Okay, so when setting the fence height, zero means that the fence is flush with the top of the blade. And that's an eight tooth blade, by the way. And if I was going to go into a two by four, like I was saying, I would raise this up to three quarters of an inch right there and lock it off. And that'll put the, the top of my biscuit cut um, three, three quarters of an inch down. So technically, if you want to compensate for the blade height, I believe you have to lower this. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong. Now, to set the depth of cut for different biscuit sizes, you see there we have 20, 10, and 0. Um, if you look here, that shows you where the blade's going to go. Right now, I have it set at 20. Mine came from the factory at zero. And how you adjust that is the back of this machine here, there's, there's a uh, tensioning bolt here with a knurled fitting. And there's three lines, there's tick marks on here with three settings. The smallest one, which is what I'm on right now, will allow less depth of travel and thus a smaller size biscuit. So the smallest tick mark is a zero size biscuit. The one that's about halfway, that one, is a number 10. And the one that fully engages and is the longest is a, is a number 20. And when you switch each of these, make sure your machine is unplugged and you lock it off. So I'm gonna set it to number 20 because that's what I'm gonna be using. So I set it on the largest tick mark, lock it in, and as you can see, the blade goes to 20. And I'm not holding it perfect, so it's not perfect, but if you set it on a level surface with a good background, you'll be able to see that. Um, the dust bag just is a compression fit. I'm sure you could probably find a shop back attachment for this also, but I don't have a good dust collection system, so I'm just using the bag. And uh, that's, that's pretty much all the features of this. Um, on the other side, there's also a height gauge. Sorry for moving around there a little bit. And uh, you can set your height for your work piece there. Um, there's a little piece of grip here, which is nice. It's like a grip tape, kind of like skateboard grip tape, um, so that it doesn't slide. Now, if you don't know how to use this machine, I'm going to show you. You place it on the work surface as such and hold it steady with your hand. Make sure your hand is far away. That's why there's a shield here. And you'll set your depth, just like I showed you, set your height, set your angle, turn the trigger on, and engage the machine into the wood. Some people said they had a lot of trouble with the cut material going not into the bag, meaning going elsewhere, you know, coming out the bottom and going onto the ground. Uh, what some people had done was engage halfway in, pull out, and that'll clear those chips and they'll go into the bag and then engage the full depth the second push and then it'll it allows just better flow into the uh, into the sawdust and chip bag here because you're taking shallower cuts each pass and that might be a good option so I'm going to try that as well one more thing I want to show you guys before we test it out is on the box it's a 6 amp machine as I said um, no load, 10,000 RPM. Be interesting to find out what it is under load. And it weighs 8.4 pounds and can do compound angles up to 135 degrees. And uh, it comes with an 8 tooth carbide. I don't even know if that's replaceable. If anyone knows if you can replace it, please let me know. I assume you could probably take this bottom plate off. The bottom plate also shows the direction of blade travel. I believe that's what that is. And we'll find out when we turn it on. So I'm gonna get a two by four and we're gonna do a, a test piece here. And we'll test the strength of the, the joints that this cuts and those Ryobi biscuits because that's really where the strength comes from is in these. Um, these are extremely um, dry pieces of wood. They suck almost all the moisture out of them. So make sure you always keep your cap tight. 
that is a key feature because what happens is when you add glue to these on each side of the joint, they suck up the glue and they expand. And that allows your joint to secure itself and be extra strong with the glue. So just make sure you keep these in a dry place. That's why they come in this kind of container. All right, let's test this thing out. All right, so I've got my height set to three quarters of an inch. And the first test we're gonna do is in the end grain, even though that's kind of the non-traditional way to do it. Um, I got my depth set on 20. And you can also read the marks here. I was explaining the tick marks before, but there's a label also for what size biscuit you're gonna use. The way you do this when you line up two pieces is you'll put your butt joint together like so and take a pencil and draw a straight line where you want your joint to be. That way when you put a biscuit in each side, even though there's some slop, it'll give you alignment. And if you look at the top of the machine, there's a center mark. Line up your center mark, hold it, and press into the machine. And I did a couple pushes on that. That was recommended by some people online. You can see the cut here, it's pretty clean. Now that was end grain, which is uh, traditionally harder to cut. Let's try some side grain on another piece. All right, we're gonna do a cut in the side grain now. I made my center mark. There we go. And my clamp failed. All right, I'm gonna do the same in the other piece and show you guys how to assemble it. All right, you can tell that the cuts on the side grain definitely didn't bog the machine down as much. I'm just gonna get a little scrap piece of wood here. And load this thing with glue. And then we'll clamp it together. Alright, so I let this joint dry for about four to five hours with the glue in it and a biscuit. And I did not use glue on the seam. So this is just merely a test of the biscuit strength itself. Wow, that was one biscuit, that was pretty much nothing. You know what I'm going to do is probably, you know what, that glue didn't dry all the way. I'm going to re-glue it and try it again. 